very happy to have each one of you at this platform today. And uh, so let's begin this uh, evening today. So we have our MCs with us today, Dr. Shino as well as Dr. Roos. So they are the one, they will be leading the uh, events for us today. So over to you, Dr. Shino as well as Dr. Roos. Good evening, all. Uh, now let's know the uh, just brief history of uh, IDA Smart City. IDA Smart City was formed on 15 December 2018 as the 32nd branch of IDA Kerala State Branch under the leadership of Dr. Srikumar S. as the secretary and the initiate, initiators who work behind the formation of Smart City Branch are Dr. Shyam S. Sundar, Dr. Sanya P. George, Dr. Sunil Alexander, Dr. Roji Kuriakos, Dr. Sanjeev Ravindran, uh, Dr. Lijo Paul and Dr. Srikumar S. So, about the Women's Dental Council. Women's Dental Council, WDC, was also established on the same day under the leadership of Dr. Kavita Biji and Dr. Biji Bala. Cancer, it is one of the world's leading cause of death and it's leading for death and its burden is growing. The theme for this year's World Cancer Day is Close the Care Gap. So, the care for cancer, like so many other diseases, reflects the inequalities and inequities in our world. So, this is a cancer awareness program for the teachers conducted by Women's Dental Council of IDA Smart City Branch uh, and in association with Barak Mother College, the Kakara. So next, I humbly request the president of IDA Smart City Branch, Dr. Sanjeev Raghavan, to deliver the welcome address. Sir, please. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, myself, Dr. Sanjeev Ravitra. I'm a professor in uh, periodontics. It's a specialty in uh, dentistry. I have a practice in Kakarad, and I'm the third president of IDA Smart City. Uh, First of all, let me congratulate uh, my WDC team, Dr. Ann, Rosemary, Shino, Krishna, all for uh, taking this initiative and conducting this program. And also, I, I would like to thank the management of uh, Barma College for wholeheartedly supporting us and uh, uh, allowing us to uh, conduct this event. Moving on to my duty, uh, it gives me immense pleasure in doing the honors of welcoming each and every one of you to this wonderful and knowledge-filled event. I feel privileged in firstly welcoming Father Dr. Abraham Oliapurath, manager of BMC, to this August gathering. Father was keen enough to accept our request to conduct this event. I, on behalf of IDS Smart City, wholeheartedly thank you, sir, for providing us with this platform. I extend my sincere and warm welcome to you, sir, Father Abraham. Thank you. Next, let me welcome Dr. Shiny Palati. Principal BMC and Staff Secretary Dr. John T. Abraham. On behalf of IDA Smart City, I welcome both of you to this awareness program. Actually, our speaker Thank for you. the day, uh, Dr. Uh, Ina Verma, a very renowned oral medicine professor, a very senior mentor to all of us in IDA Smart City. I welcome you, madam, to this uh, your own program. <laughs> and uh, I would like to thank. Uh, from bottom of my heart for uh, showing the interest in uh, doing this event. Of course, promoting and uh, uh, sharing awareness regarding cancer is uh, very important in the current scenario. And I wholeheartedly thank you for uh, uh, coming forward to do this presentation today. I'm indeed honored in welcoming all the teachers of Bharat Mother College who have uh, taken their time uh, out, precious time out from the busy schedule to be with us uh, this evening. I'm sure. Dr. Bina will be sharing a lot of valuable inputs through which, uh, through the teachers, uh, these inputs will reach uh, the students. Our end target is the students of uh, a very impressionable age. Uh, teachers are in direct contact with all the students and uh, the, all the knowledge which Dr. Bina Orma will be sharing with the teachers today should be imparted to the students of Bharat Mother College and that they will definitely benefit from this. Last but not least, my dear Smart City members, I extend a very warm uh, welcome to all of you. Wishing you all a very pleasant and uh, knowledge-filled evening today. Thank you all. Well, thank you, Dr. Sanjeev. Next, I request 
Father Dr. Abraham Uliyavarath, Manager of Bharat Mada College for Benedictory Note. Sir, audio or I am very happy to join with WDC Idea Smart City branch to give the awareness about cancer to the teachers as well as through the teachers to the students. I think this is what uh, when uh, mentors called me and they aim it by this uh, awareness program. So I am very happy. Uh, actually, I didn't know about this in this doctor's forum or anything. And also, I am not much aware of the oral cancer. I think I'll go in with and give the idea about the oral cancer rather than the cancer in general. I anyway, I have requested all the teachers from the college by all means to participate in this particular program so that we may get much awareness and the knowledge about the cancer that they will be aware of how we have to be careful about affecting the cancer disease because it is society. And I don't know to say much about uh, anything but and I am very happy to have with you. Session and also, I think we can uh, even can conduct about this awareness program not only about the cancer but also about other diseases, how it affects our human being. Uh, since you are very much specialized on uh, the then this, but we can take other topics also, it can join with us. Sure, sir, sure, sure, sure. But I expect from this program it shall be a beginning of therefore i am uh, very much grateful to you those who are organizing this program and thank you so much and god bless you and uh, it shall be a great uh, awareness for everyone that does a successful uh, program that we are conducting today so thank you so much thank you very much thank you sir Thank you, Father Abraham, for the speech. So, next I request Dr. Krishna Vijayan to introduce the speaker of the day, uh, Dr. Bina Verma. Good evening, one and all. Our speaker for today is Dr. Bina Verma. She's Professor Emeritus in the Department of Oral Medicine and Radiology in Amrita School of Dentistry. She was the head of the department in Amrita for five years and in Royal Dental College for three years. She retired to attain her current designation in March 2021. Previously, she has worked in Yanipoya Dental College and Jaipur Dental College as assistant professor and reader, respectively. She has over 16 years of experience after completing her post graduation and 12 years of experience after her undergraduation. In her academic career, she has more than 30 scientific paper publications in her name and five book publications of which she is the sole author of two. I have only been able to provide to you with a brief description of Ma'am's epitome of achievements. In my personal opinion, I see her as a motherly figure with un unorthodox views and all the more as a human encyclopedia. Welcome, Ma'am. I kindly request you to start the session. Thank you, Krishna, for that introduction. I don't deserve that much, OK? <laughs> you do, ma'am. Uh, shall I share the screen now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. How do I go to the presentation? I have opened it. I don't see it yet.
Ma'am, at present now click here. Uh, you can uh, select that your entire screen. Uh, up arrow can now do icon press here. Uh, three options comes. So the entire screen, a window, and a tab. Actually, I don't have a problem with that, but I don't know why. In the chain, the answer entire screen on the left is in the upper over the other than the click area. Other click in the day, your entire screen in the run under law. Other left on the first day. Ah, let's see. For a screen for a number of other than the proceed to a favorite. Other than the doctor, the PPT let away for the PPT. For the virus. Yes. A very good evening to one and all, respected father, Dr. Abraham Uliapurath, manager of Bharat Mada College, Dr. Shaini Palati, the principal, Dr. John T. Abraham, staff uh, secretary, and uh, president, uh, IDA Smart City, Dr. Sanjay Ravindran, secretary, Dr. Joji, and uh, women's. Uh, WDC chairperson Dr. Ann and all the faculty members of uh, Bharat Mata College and all others who have uh, all the members of the IDS Masri and all others who have joined a warm welcome. Uh, I don't want to make it into a very dry and scientific presentation because I don't believe in now uh, such things. We should share. That's what I believe in. Rather than a very official, uh, dry scientific deliberation, uh, I, I want to share things with you. So, uh, usually what happens is people, when they conduct programs, the one who presents stands in a pedestal and it's like water flowing uh, from up down thinking the ones who are listening doesn't know, don't know anything and the one who is presenting knows everything but that should not be the case it, it it's sharing i know certain things you may be knowing certain things so we will stand at par and we will share things and uh, i if one person benefits i'll be happy about that at least one person so through introduction to conclusion, I'll be discussing a little bit about the concepts of cancer and why we should bother about it. And what is this concept of can care gap and what we can do about it. So, uh, many times people think what I can do. I'm only a single person. So what I can do as a, as a single person. So I may be one person but I can be the one person who makes a difference. That depends on me. Whether I'm re ready to do per persistently with perseverance and with perpetual effort, am I going to do things? Then definitely I can make the difference. So why this is important is many cancers are preventable if precautions are taken and completely curable when detected early. So this is where I, you, and everybody comes into play. Where early detection, taking precautions, so that it is you can prevent it, and you can, if it comes, you can cure it also. So before going into the concept of uh, care gap, just for your understanding, I, I, I know you know so many things about it, but still, 
for a better clear understanding we will define what is cancer so everybody knows that from school onwards we study about mitosis cell division etc etc so growth is mainly dependent on the cell division so when when you grow cells have to di di divide but there is a coordinated very orchestrated program it is a very orche orchestrated program and when the growth need to be stopped it stops so the cell knows how much it has to grow how much it has to proliferate and where it has to stop so if that that's okay but the problem starts then it doesn't know where to stop so the definition of cancer by bill is cancer is an abnormal mass of tissue so normal cells we know it it knows what it has to do and it stops once it has to stop but this cancer cell it doesn't follow any rules uh in between if i say a little bit in malayalam also it's okay no no issues ma'am okay so it's like oru paranya kekatha kuttiye pole it's an abnormal mass of tissue the growth of which exceeds and is uncoordinated so normal cell it is uh, it is uh, very limited and it knows where to stop it is very much co coordinated but the cancer cell the growth exceeds and is uncoordinated with that of the normal tissue not only really that it persists in the same excessive manner after the cessation of the stimuli which you were seeing so for a cell to divide some stimuli has to be there so we don't know what stimulated this cancer and why it is still growing so it grows and grows and grows so that is where powell's definition becomes apt it is an autonomous parasite so it has its own rules it has and it doesn't listen to anybody and it grows as a parasite in the body depending on and depleting the nutrition everything of the host so and uh, formally people were not so much concerned with cancer we we never heard so much of cancer formally so what could be the reason why there is so much of uh, increase in cancer so i can ex explain for your uh, understanding it's like a in a factory suppose a factory you make goods so when you make 100 goods one or two may be defective not all 100 goods are good enough so what do we do we have a repair system also simultaneously so this repair system what it does is if it is repairable and redeemable it will correct it but if it is not then it is destroyed and if it is reusable it reuses it so in nature nothing is wasted so either repair or reused all well good enough but where does you go wrong when the body system cannot handle the number of repairable irreparable or irredeemable cells that is where the problem starts so why does this happen this happens because of two things either the number of unrepairable cells are on the increase due to the environmental or external factors or the immune system is defective because it cannot handle even the normal irreparable cells so two things one is external factors one the other is internal factors so currently the external factors are more why because the water we drink the food we eat the air we breathe everything is polluted which paves the way to defective cell division 
it's producing havoc in the body. So, and the lifestyle diseases are also on the increase, like diabetes, then the infectious diseases like immune deficiency disease, AIDS, etc., which is putting the immune system down. So two things happen. The environment is producing all the bad things, and simultaneously the body is going down in immunity. When when these two are put together, definitely the number of cancers have to increase. No wonder. So this is the statistical report. 138 crores old people, among the 138 crores old people, 13,24,430 new cases are being produced, reported every day, and 8,51,678 deaths happen. And the five year <clears throat> prognosis for these people is of around 27 black 20,251 people it's a huge number and smokers have three times the higher risk so among all the cancers in women it is the cervical cancer and the breast cancer is the maximum and among men it is the oral oral cavity cancer and the death rates are also equally in among these. So the age adjusted rate of mouth cancer was maximum. This is a study done in 2018. It was maximum in the central region, that is central India. In the 70 to 75 age group, whereas more in Northeast and Western India in the uh, 60 to 69 age group, that is 58.4%. And in females, mouth cancer maximum in the Northeast and the central regions, where it was 60.2% and 37.2% respectively. And the age group is slightly high, high as compared to men. They are more in 70 to 75 year age groups. And both in males and females, the mouth health Cancer has maximum age adjusted incidence rates in the central zone. So, this is a very alarming situation. So, according to the Global Cone, so, uh, 11,57,279 new cancer cases. This is uh, another report in India in both men and women. And top five can cancers among them, cervical and oral cancer stand the highest. So why these programs then? If, so this is where the program, the significance of these programs come. There is a uh, program like detect early and save her or him. DASH. It's a uh, nationwide program and public private partnership has to be there because it is not the not only the uh, responsibility of the government or the doctors or the hospitals it is a collective responsibility of the society at large so public private partnership has to be there ngos has to work civil society private sector uh, all these have to work together for early diagnosis and treatment of common non-communicable diseases. Cancer is a non-communicable disease through appropriate guidelines as per the need of at central, state, district levels and below. So now we'll come to the concept of uh, this year's concept of uh, cancer awareness. So it's a three-year plan. So WHO has, uh, has a three-year plan from 2022 to 2024. So in 2022, they have decided that we are going to real, realize the problem. So people have to be made aware, we'll have to know what problem it is, how severe the problem is, and everybody should be made aware of the problem. Then in 2023, the aim is to, to unite the voices together and take action. How to curb it? And in 2024, it is uh, aimed at 
to be together and challenge those in power. So if proper action is not being taken by the government, we are going to raise the voice so that we will be heard and something will be done. So it, it's like taking small steps. Take small steps every day. Persistence, perseverance, and putte. perpetual effort. One day, you will definitely reach there. So this care gap mostly relates to equity. So what is this equity? Equity is slightly different from equality. I'll dis discuss it in the next slide. So inequity should not be there in cancer care. That is race, ethnicity, geographical location, and income should not dictate cancer outcomes. But unfortunately, exactly that is what is happening. So this is the uh, UNESCO ethical uh, committee's uh, displayed picture. So the reality. Reality is one gets more than what, what is needed, while the other gets less than what is needed. Thus, a huge disparity is created. And what is equality then? The assumption is that everyone benefits from the same support. So everybody needs the same support system. That is, everybody should be treated equally. But equity is slightly different. So you can see the pictures. All three kids of different heights, they are given the equal uh, they are standing on the uh, uh, this thing on of equal height that means the smallest one is not able to see anything at all so that is where equity comes so the taller boy gives his stand to the shorter one so equity who needs more should be provided with more so everyone gets the support they need not equal but what one needs which produces equal but what is justice all three can see the game without support or accommodations because the causes of the inequity was addressed so why this inequity is there that was addressed so the systemic barrier has been removed this is what we are going to discuss how to uh, remove the barrier of inequity. So, so what are the gaps in care? This is a, the picture is a cropped version of the <coughs> picture that is there in the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo's picture. The one who is on the left is, the, uh, is Adam and the, who is on the right is the God. So God is giving life to Adam. That is what is depicted, depicted in the picture. So even without closing the gap, the life is being transferred. But in our case, we want to close the gap so that we can give life to others. So for, for that, first of all, we have to decide what are the gaps there. So that there is a knowledge gap. Many people don't know about it. So this gap has to be filled. Then access. Even if you know, you don't know where to access, or we are not, or you are not able to access the provisions. Then there is a huge gap between the genders, male, female gap. Then the social constraints are there, the economic constraints are there, the age gap is there, the regional variations are there resource distribution is different, then cultural uh, problems are there. Then in the current scenario, technology, the digital technology also comes into play and creates a great, huge gap. So all these gaps, as far as possible, has to be closed. So what you want to do, you will have to decide. Whether you want to cement it, whether you want to bridge it, or whether you want to bypass it and go. That is what you have to decide. So we'll uh, take one by one. 
the gap in knowledge. So many people, or most of the people know certain things about what causes can oral cancer. So we are concentrating on oral cancer because uh, I don't have that much uh, knowledge to discuss other cancers. So I'll, that's why oral cancer awareness. So what are the, many people know tobacco is the most important risk factor, et cetera, et cetera. So the established risk factors are the smoking tobacco, smokeless, smokeless tobacco, then uh, the pan masala, the gutka, whatever that comes in the shiny packet, then high alcohol consumption, and even little bit of the potentially malignant disorders, that is the white patch, the red patch in the oral cavity, that most of the people, because of so many awareness programs, many people know. But there are other possible factors also. And in many people who does not use any of these or do not have any of these uh, deleterious habits also gets cancer. So that is where the patient is perplexed. So many people will say, I, I don't have any bad habits. I don't smoke. I don't drink. I don't uh, do any of these things. But still, why should I get so that is where other possible risk factors also should be elaborated and understood. And many people do not understand that diet is a major problem. Diet lacking in fresh fruits and vegetables and viral infections. One by many of these I'll elaborate. I won't will not go into detail of each one, but all major things I'll elaborate on that. Then immune deficiency, then uh, uh, drinking, especially hot beverages. In Italy, maximum number of cancers reported where they drink hot soup at high temperature. And in France, 14% of people have oral cancer. And that is because of uh, some local uh, alcohol. So the va regional variations are also there in etiologic factors. So these are tobacco use. Fifty-seven percent of the men and eleven percent of the women use tobacco. Then alcohol. It's available in various colors, textures, whatever. And pardon me, but the staple food of uh, Kerala men is, I, I feel, uh, alcohol. No offense intended. Okay. Then physical inactivity. That again, physical activity is a detoxifier. So when you are not physically active, your tox the toxins may accrue in your body. Then unhealthy diet, viral infections like HPV, radiation, chronic irritation. This again has to be highlighted because chronic irritation also can lead to oral cancer. Then immune deficiency conditions like diabetes, AIDS, all we discussed. And major met metabolic risk factors are obesity, increased blood pressure, increased blood sugar, and increased cholesterol. When all these are not there also, there is a factor. That is the genetics. So genetic factor you cannot uh, ignore. But at the same time, you cannot identify also. You don't know which person is going to get uh, cancer and which person is not. Who is genetically prone? So far, there are no tests which tells you that, okay, this person is genetically prone and this person is not. If, you, if we had something like that, many people would have, uh, could have uh, uh, started smoking or without any fear. So in this context, I remember one story. Bernard Shaw. Everybody knows who Bernard Shaw is. Okay. So he went to the doctor uh, for consultation. So doctor told you stop drinking, you stop smoking, and you do all these bad habits. Then he asked, what will happen then? So you can live longer. So he was asking. If I cannot do all these things, why should I live longer? So this is the attitude of people, OK? And tobacco. It is cultivated all over the world, the dark brown. India, China, North America, South America, etc. It is 
more than 100 hectares of 100,000 hectares of land is cultivated by cultivate is uh, allocated for uh, tobacco. So the other significance of this also I'll tell you in the coming slides. So tobacco, whether it is smoking form, smokeless form, it produces uh, 4,000 different chemicals. So the current uh, literature says 6,000 to 7,000 different chemicals when it is burnt. And 43 among them are carcinogens. And few among them are nicotine, tar, ammonia, arsenic, the slow killer, polonium, the radioactive material, cadmium, mercury, so and whatnot. An interesting thing is that it is metabolized faster in women compared to men. That's why the women who start smoking become more addicted because within two, two hours, it gets metabolized faster than so men can uh, so women tend to smoke more because within two hours the effect is gone so this is an interesting picture look at the cigarette what all things it produces it produces butane so butane is used to light your uh, what do you call your lighter, cigarette lighter. Then you have cadmium, which is used in batteries. You have candle wax, which is a stearic acid, which is used for candle, making candle. Hexamine, which is a barbecue lighter. Toluene, which is an industrial solvent. Nicotine, which is an insecticide. We use tobacco. And then ammonia, which is used for toilet cleaning. Then paint, fuel, methanol, carbon monoxide, arsenic, methane, it is a sugar ga gas. So when you burn a cigarette, all these are being produced, which you are going to consume through nose, through mouth, whatever. And there are so many common mistakes, mistaken beliefs. So tobacco, betel nut, etc. If it is consumed regularly but in small amounts, uh, it's okay. It doesn't cause any, any bad things, but uh, it may improve digestion. Many people need smoke for the early morning pro programs, and it increases concentration. It, it may it may even relieve pain. And only smoking is harmful. It is chewed, there's no problem at all. That's another mistaken belief. And these are harmful only in old age where the immunity goes down. I'm too young to have all these problems. That's another mistaken belief. And quantity of tobacco in kara and pan goods is very less. So these things are used as a uh, in uh, social gatherings also. Formerly, in every marriage, they used to keep all these things. So they don't cause any problem. That's another myth. So many other myths are also there. Cancer means death. No, it can be cured. One gets cancer because of bad karma. This may be true. You have bad karma, bad habits. Cancer is contagious. No, it's not a contagious disease. It's a lifestyle disease. Stress, hair dye, deodorants, they do not cause cancer. But studies have shown that they, they also cause, are contributing factors for production of cancer. And cancers are always hereditary. Need not be. Some cancers run in the family, like breast cancer, etc., but not all cancers are hereditary or they don't run in the family. And some forms of tobacco do not cause cancer. Again, another myth. This is what I was talking about the cultivation of uh, tobacco. So much of deforestation is being happening. 
it happens in two ways. One, for the cultivation. We have already seen how much land is being used. Then for curing the tobacco, there are so many different methods, but most common method is by wood, by heating with wood. So for the combustion, again, so much of deforestation is being done. So for cultivation and for curing, so much of wood is being cut, which ends up in environmental problems also. In China, 18% of national deforestation is for tobacco cultivation and curing. And in, in India, 68,000 hectares of forests were removed between 1962 and 2002. That means an average of 1,700 hectares annually. So you can imagine the enormity of the wrongdoing. So tobacco is not the only thing. We already discussed chronic irritation. So in this uh, picture, you can see here, there is a sharp tooth. And because of this sharp tooth, there is a white lesion over here, which in turn, if you don't take care of the sharp tooth, can lead to mouth cancer. See, here. The tooth is impinging on the tongue producing chronic irritation. So when there is chronic irritation, there is a reduction in the local immunity. That is what leads to cancerous growth. Then appliances, when they have sharp edges, they may impinge on the tongue or the cheek. or And if it, it is not taken care of, then again, this can lead to oral cancer. So like this. This is a result of chronic irritation. Then diet. So there is a saying, you are what you eat. There is a Sanskrit shloka, Deepo bhakshayade thvandam tajjalam japrasuyade yadannam bhakshayade nityam jayade tadrashi prada. It means the lamp it eats, eats up darkness. So what does it produce? It produces soot, which is dark. So similarly, whatever you eat, that is what you are going to produce. So diet plays a major role, not only in cancer, but most or every disease, diet plays a major role. So every 35 days, your skin gets replaced. That means so much of mitosis is being, is taking place. Your liver, about, about a month. And your bone, once in 10 years you get new bone. So if you live for 80 years, eight times your the whole skeleton must have changed. So your body makes these new cells from the food you eat. So what you eat literally becomes you. So that is the meaning of you are what you eat. So food is the fuel supplying energy for the body. So fuel your body with a diet rich in color. No doubt it's the creator's diet of choice. So what does it mean? In the left hand side also you have uh, colorful food. In the right hand side also you have colorful food, food. So what gives color also is very important. Whether it is the vegetables which is colorful or the artificial food with the artificial petroleum based colors. So that also is a decisive factor. So there are pro-inflammatory diets and anti-inflammatory diets. Pro-inflammatory. Inflammation means combustion, production of fire. So the, the processed food, what you eat, I don't have to enumerate the process, but everybody knows. You have the swiggy, you have the somato. So you give order and it is there right in front of you. But they are all pro-inflammatory diets. Once in a while it is okay, but don't make it 
your staple food. So they produced increased risk of oral and oropharyngeal cancer compared to those who consumed more, more anti-inflammatory diet. So these are all studies, evidence-based. So the effects of fast food, it provides extra calories, it produces insulin resistance, high blood pressure, blotting and puffiness, shortness of breath, headache, and it, it affects the heart, the liver, every organ of the body. <coughs> Sorry. And there are so many myths about food. Only the expensive vegetables are good. It's not like that. You don't have to pay extra for broccoli. Carrot is good enough. Instead of China seeds, you can go for fenugreek seeds, which is very much available in your mother's kitchen. Strawberry is not that enough. In your courtyard, you have guava, which is better. Kombucha is not necessary. Buttermilk is good enough. The flora and the fauna of every region is meant for the people over there. So why should you change your uh, diet when you have everything provided in and around you? Why do you go for uh, more expensive exported, imported things? But then there is the gap, the two ends of the spectrum, the haves and the have-nots. There are people who don't have even one square meal a day. Whereas there are people who consume more than what they really need. This is one gap we have to close along with the knowledge in the diet, dietary habits. How dietary habits can lead to cancer, that has to be highlighted. At the same time, the gap between the haves and have-nots also need be bridged and poor oral hygiene this is a non cause cause along with other habits when the oral hygiene is poor that is when you have bad teeth when you have bad periodontium when you have uh, when you don't clean your teeth properly all these can accentuate the production of cancer and virus along with the habits, the lifestyle also made changes. Papilloma virus was known for cervical cancer, but in many of the, currently in many of the oral cancers also, these uh, viruses are indicated, uh, highlighting changes in habits. Then there is a gap in the awareness of symptoms. So when you have it, how do we know? How do I know whether I'm having cancer or not, or whether I'm prone to have cancer or not? That gap has to be filled. So these are a few warning signs, but they are not very specific. They can be sign of so many other diseases also. Persistent hoarseness of voice. It may be uh, oropharyngeal cancer also, but so many other uh, ENT problems also. Ear pain. Discharge from the ear, persistent sore throat. It may be even a sign of our COVID-19 also. Then epistaxis, that is bleeding from the nose. Then there is obstruction of the nose or dysphagia, that is difficulty in swallowing, especially when it is associated with anemia. It may be a warning sign. Plus the causative factors, that is the habit of smoking, habit of heavy drinking, etc chewing uh, tobacco, etc. And difficulty with speech, especially when you have uh, growth in the tongue, you may not be able to speak properly. Unaccounted big loss. So nowadays, everybody is interested in having zero figures. So they go to gym, they go to, uh, they do yoga, pranayama, etc, etc. So there is a tendency for everybody to lose weight. But when this weight loss is 
unaccounted, it is a warning sign. Then you may have neck masses. The most important warning sign is a non-healing ulcer. In the oral cavity, ulcers heal very fast. You must have seen animals licking the wound. So there is a phrase, lick the wound. So saliva contains so many uh, ingredients which can lead to early healing. So that's why oral uh, ulcers heal faster. But when you have a non-healing ulcer, more than two or three or four weeks, then it has to be seen with little caution. So you may have to show it to somebody. Then submucosal masses, etc. Self-examination. This can be done. You don't have to go to anybody. You can do it yourself. But you may have to have little practice or you may have to learn it from somebody who knows it so that once in a while, it's, it's not necessary that every day morning you get up and start examining. No. But it's good if once in a while you can check your lips, check your cheek, check your tongue, check your palate for any change, any color change, any change in size, any change in structure. This may be a benign thing which doesn't have any problem, but it could be some major problem also. So when you see such things, you may get a consultation from an expert so that you can rule out. They may present in different ways. So when you say tumor is just a swelling, but these swellings, how and all it can present. It could be sessile. Sessile means it merges with the surrounding structures. A growth pattern where the base is the virus. That is, it blends with the surrounding structures. Then you may have a pedunculated. Pedunculated means it's like a stalk, like a flower. It has a pedangle. That kind of growth also can be there. So it may be a benign one, which does not cause any problem. But it could be a malignant. That is a major problem. Or papillary. Papillary means have surface projections, small, small, small surface projections. Swelling with small, small surface projections. Or verrucous, where the surface projections may be little more large. So there are no specific ways in which it, oral cancer presents. It can present in so many different ways. That is the main problem. And it mimics. It's a mimicker. It's a great mimicker. It mimics so many other things. So that's another problem. So you have to rule out other uh, conditions also. So these are a few of the uh, presentations. A red lesion, a white lesion, a swelling. Here again, there is a swelling. So all these you can find out by self-examination itself. Then you have potentially malignant lesions. Formerly it was known as pre-malignant lesions, pre-malignant conditions, etc. Now they have put it everything together under the heading potentially malignant lesions. So uh, these are a few potentially malignant lesions. Leukoplakia, that means a raised white lesion. Erythroplasia, that's a red lesion. Actinic chelitis, that is something which occurs in the tongue, in the lip, who, in people who are exposed to sunlight. And studies have shown that those who use lipstick, as females who use lipstick, have less chance of getting actinic chelitis. So lipstick, in a way, is good. It, does, it not only beautifies, it protects also. Then pipe smokers, keratosis, dyskeratosis, congenita, it's a genetic disorder. Then snuff dippers. So tobacco is used in many different ways and uh, even chronic candidiasis that is a fungal infection so when you have chronic candidiasis that means you have a chronic state of less immunity at either generally or locally so that can be a warning sign also then oral submucous fibrosis this is mainly seen in people who use that uh, arachnid and most of the people the uh, people who come from north, most of them have this because they have the heavy use of all these. 
then oral lichen planus. It's an autoimmune disease and sideropenic dysphagia that is uh, difficulty in swallowing associated with severe anemia. The most common presentation, which, which is a almost sure shot, is ulceroproliferative. So there is an ulcer and there is a swelling. A proliferative group with sulfur, surface ulceration. So these are all different forms of these ulceroproliferative patients. Different pictures here. Under surface of the tongue, the buccal, the, the cheek. This is the palate, the gums. You can see the white component. That is, one is a debris and the other one is candidiasis. Another thing that you have to be very careful about is neck nodes. This cancer cells, we already saw that they are autonomous parasites. They can do whatever they want. They can create blood vessels. They can uh, dilute the skin. They can go anywhere they want through bloodstream. And they can get deposited wherever they find a uh, fertile field. They settle down there and they start proliferating. So the first pro migration may be to the lymph nodes. So the lymphatic system is the protectors of the body. So when they migrate, they, they are lodged, they are stopped there. But they when they stop there, they start proliferating there only. So that is where the lymph nodes become larger. So the this is known as lymph node metastasis. Metastasis is going from one place to another and settling down there in terms of cancer. So first they'll go to the nodes in the neck, the lymph nodes in the neck. Then slowly they may migrate to other areas also. And in females, it is, the, 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 it is a two-way process. In the cervical cancer, the breast cancer, etc., have metastasis oral cancer can metastasis to that area those cancers can metastasize into the oral cavity also and in males it is mainly prostate and lungs the two-way process then the gap the major gap so you have all the bad habits you got cancer also now what what you have to treat but from where does the finance come? Most of the people, this is a major problem. The, when you consider the economy, the top 1% now account for around 10% of the total income in advanced economies. So it is vested with a few. The majority of the people are, are not able to cope with financially. Half of the world wealth is now owned by just 1% of the population, amounting to $110 trillion. And in India, the situation is not different. The top 0.1% increase wealth steadily, more than the bottom 50% earners. So there is a huge gap. It's, it's a gulf. And, rise, the, and there is a problem with education also. Education is directly linked with finance. You need money to get educated. So rising university costs have contributed to lower access to education by the poor. Another indicator of poor health. So good education is an indicator of good health. And poor education is an indicator of poor health. So lower low income households and small scale firms often they face challenges in accessing financial services due to lack of financial knowledge. So the, their knowledge about the financial matters is less than the complicated processes. So many forms have to be filled. Basically, they may not know where to, whom to approach. And when they approach also, the, the process is so complicated that uh, they may not be able to do the paperwork and other market fail they are not able to face the market failures also and the available financial products are very limited and they are very relatively costly 
So hence, these are also accessible only to the high income people. And there are n number of insurance policies also there, but only very few people know about it. There are specific cancer related insurance policies also. Government owned insurance policies also, but the knowledge of these things, not many people have. So this gap also has to be filled. So you have to spread the information. People should know where I can get uh, financial, financial assistance. There are core groups which collect money and distribute for the needy. So not many people know about these things. So this knowledge also has to be dissipated among the needy. So that is another responsibility that we have. In treatment, there is a huge gap. The accessibility to treatment. OK, now you are diagnosed with cancer. Where to go? Now, you, you don't have money. You have money. But still, you should know where to go to get it done. And how much money you have to spend. So how much money you have to spend depend on, depends on so many things. One is the hospital factors. So it's a high type of hospital. Where you go for, is it a private hospital? Is it a government hospital? Or is it a trust? The charges are different. Are you using insurance? If you are using insurance policy, what type of insurance? Or are you paying from your pockets? Accreditation of facilities, where they are accredited to. Reputation and brand value of the hospital, the charges vary. Then the medical team factors, technology. Some hospitals have modern, ultra modern technology, where, uh, whereas in some other hospital, you have the outdated uh, technology. So it depends, the team factors. The type of surgery. Is it a major surgery? Is it a minor surgery? Do we need to do a radiotherapy after that? Do we need to give medications after that? Or you need to have only surgery? And when you're doing a surgery, what type of anesthesia that has to be? Is the patient having comorbidity so that he he's, whether he is able to withstand general anesthesia? Are there any contraindications for that? Or can we do it under just sedation? Then the qualification and the expertise of the specialist also will decide the how much money you have to pay. If he's an expert, super specialist, then it goes up. And the extent of the surgery, whether it's a small lesion, whether it's a large lesion, whether you have to remove the neck nodes, whether you have to do something else also. So all those will decide. Then the patient's factors, the stage of diagnosis, whether it is uh, stage one, stage two, stage three, etc. So these, these staging is done depending on the severity of the disease. Okay. So whether it is stage one, stage two, stage three, etc. How is the general health of the patient? Can the patient withstand the surgery? Is he fit to undergo therapy? Is his uh, liver good enough to um, comply with the medications that he is taking, all these will decide. Then room category. In many hospitals, the room category will decide how much money you have to pay. Is it an AC room or is it an ordinary room? Is it a ward, etc. And other treatments required by the patient in conjunction. So if he's a diabetic patient, the diabetes has to be brought down. If he's hypertensive, the hypertension has to be brought down to normal. So, so many other factors also will come. The patient factors also will contribute to the decision and the finance of the treatment. So this is a rough uh, picture. If this is not a foolproof or a exclusive picture, it may vary. But this is what is given in the net. So I thought it may be interesting to know how much money you may have to pay, roughly about how much money you have to pay. And in Kerala, it is it varies. The low, lowest cost is uh, 2 lakh 65,000, whereas the highest cost is around 5 lakhs. This may vary.
So, third of the global incidence of cancer in 2020. Third, one third of the people are affected with cancer. Two, 2,386 crores of rupees were spent on oral cancer treatment alone. Compare it with the GDP. And this uh, was paid through different uh, agencies. It may be an insurance scheme, government and private sector spending, out-of-pocket payments. And this out-of-pocket payment is the one which is going to burden the family and charitable donations also. Uh, when I was doing my PG, PG, we had a posting in RCC. So one month posting in RCC. Uh, head and neck uh, cancer. So the posting was from uh, 8 to 2. So after 2 o'clock till 6 o'clock, I used to sit in the library. So the RCC is very much inside the campus. So you have to walk around one more than one kilometer to the bus stand. So what I used to do was I used to sit till 6 o'clock and then I'll walk to the bus stand and catch the bus and go home. So while uh, this uh, patient visiting hours are from 4 to 6. So by 6 o'clock, most of the uh, visitors will be going back. So I, I used to listen to what they were, their talk. Many people used to tell. So these uh, cancer occurs around 55, 60 years of age when the person retires. So the person will have uh, uh, what do you call uh, gratuity, pain, and all lump sum amount in the pocket. So they may decide to start the treatment. But once the treatment is started, money goes like anything, just vaporizes. So I I use many people, I, 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 I have heard many people telling, last week I got uh, two lakhs with me. So within one week, it is over. So for the next week, I don't know what to do. So it's not only the treatment cost, it's a, it incurs the cost for the those who stay there. They cannot stay in the hospital. So they are staying outside in the hotel. So their food, their transportation, and their other needs are also should be catered to. Along with that, during treatment, uh, before treatment, during treatment, after treatment, so many CTs, MRIs, and other investigations have to be done. Then medications have to be bought. So it is a huge, huge, huge burden. So I used to feel bad, but like everybody, I used to, what I can do. Then fairness, age-related and gender-related issues. So who should get? The man who wears the hat or the female? When both get, who should get? And there is so much of disparity between... Uh, we are closing to the Women's Day also. So that is why I'm a little concerned about the women. Okay. So this picture, the, it shows the, gen, uh, the red ones show where there is maximum gender disparity. And, and uh, farthest from the uh, orange one, we tell you high inequality and the red one extremely high inequality. This is the uh, map of India with gender equality. Then you have a gap in technology. So nowadays technology is uh, booming. The explosion is taking place. So Artificial intelligence-based diagnosis and therapy. Of course, it's very expensive. And there is something called Internet of Things. So this Internet of Things is accessing and controlling daily usable equipments and devices using Internet. 
so these can be used only for those only for those who can afford it so now nowadays these uh, uh, people old people geriatric people who are living alone this internet of things uh, is helping them so much so how it is done is uh, many devices are there which can be even those people who cannot uh, move their hands or something it it can be activated by voice by touch and so many other ways so many instruments are uh, are in the house where it can be manipulated by the patient himself so old people who are left alone in the house they are also able to live alone with the help of internet of things it's it's a something new not that new but it is a comparatively new thing uh, so but these things only those who can afford can uh, have it not everybody so uh, uh, i'm coming to the end of the session so fight against cancer by preventing it so when so much problem is there especially finance financial problem and other uh, comorbidities associated with fight by preventing rather than getting it and fighting it because a pinch of caution could eliminate a latent disaster so there is a crab in the picture are you able to see it can anybody are you able to see a crab in the picture yes Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we can see this. So, cancer is as the perfect camouflage. So we don't want it. We want it to be latent, not manifest, right? So, what is cancer awareness? Self education. Self education is very important. When you when you are traveling in a, a plane. they tell you no if oxygen is coming down you mask yourself first before you help others so unless and until you know about it how are you going to guide others so you can have cancer education campaigns awareness campaigns fundraising campaigns uh, and uh, you can have uh, knowledge about the products and fundraising merchandise most importantly then do cancer research also so even it, it's not necessary that only the medical professionals should do research the biologists those who study about cells those who are in engineering those who are in other fields also can do research in association with the medical professionals so recently i uh, came across some uh, diagnostic uh, instrument electronic nose the concept is there are dogs which can uh, detect cancer by smelling so this is a concept that they have taken so with the use of artificial intelligence with the use of technology they have created an electronic nose and the basic thing is every disease produces every disease is a metabolic disease metabolism changes chemical changes in the body so everything that happens in the body you close your eyes you move your hand some chemical reaction is taking place so similarly in disease process also there are so many different chemicals are being produced or the chemicals which are present in the body are getting activated so these devices can detect this so in kidney disease you have uremic smell in the oral cavity in diabetes you have ketone smell in the oral cavity so similarly many diseases have many smells volatile compounds are present so they have devised a mechanism or a there is a device which is known as electronic nose which can smell cancer interest So, 
Why cancer awareness? Does it work? You have to have evidence whether it works or not. 32% drop in cancer death rates between 1991 and 2019. That is 3.5 million fewer cancer death because of these awareness programs and early detection. The combination treatments for many cancers, prevention and or early detection through screening for some for some cancers include and many of the cancers we have already seen that they can be prevented or detected early. In 2% reduction a year from 2015 to 2019 compared to 1% a year during 1990. So we have so many cancer awareness program which is giving results. And oral visual screening. The screening was followed by 34% reduction in oral cancer. So that is where self-examination comes into play. So this is a study in Chandigarh by Singh et al. After health education intervention, about one third of substance users expressed their intention to quit these habits. So promotion of oral self-examination could be a potentially potential primary preventive strategy. And oral cancer is ideal cancer to be identified by screening program. So to conclude, every day comes no matter how short. Every effort comes, no matter how small. Every gift comes, no matter how small. So live every day, try every day, and help someone every day. The little things we sometimes ignore or carry out end up being our greatest obstacles or victory. Let's do our best and let the omnipresent, the omnipotent, and the omniscient take care of the rest. So take my message. Educating the patient and family about expected symptoms and their management. Helping patients and families make decisions about practical and financial changes in the family structure. Clarifying information about medications and medical procedures. Facilitating patient and family communications with the team. Educating public about the medical insurance. Normalizing the patient's emotional experience. Teaching effective coping skills. To do all these things, you need not be a medical or a healthcare professional. You can be an ordinary layman. As a layman also, you can do these things. And as teachers, you can do more. So you are the architect, you are molding the architects of uh, the millennium. So you can do so many things by educating your students. So, a happy learning and happy teaching. Thank so, you, ma'am. These are all uh, some uh, videos. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, if you want, I can put one or two. Otherwise, I'll skip. Amidst the dance, there is always a clear line. So, you have to light the lamp to remove the darkness. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Shall I stop? Of course, that was a wonderful session. So now the forum is open for the discussion. If the audience have any doubts, you can put it on the chat box. I can't stop with these notes. Ma'am, I guess all uh, all their doubt has been clarified. <laughs> so I take the positive note. Everything. Is clear. Yeah, <laughs> everyone got their doubt cleared. <laughs> or maybe they didn't understand anything also. That also is there. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I will take the first one. Yeah, always. I guess all got cleared by uh, your class. Yeah. So, I guess no one is having any further doubts. It's
Excuse me, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, sir. I just want to ask you whether the increase in the platelet counts that may lead to is that an indication of cancerous? An increase in platelet count? Uh, I'm not very really sure about it. He's asking whether the increase in the count of it. Yeah, I heard it, but I'm not very really sure about it. So I cannot answer things which I'm not clear about. Okay. Uh, Reddy, sir, I think we should be more concerned if there is increase in uh, WBC counts. And reduction in RBC counts. Yeah. And reduction and in platelets as well as More counts. important indicator. So anemia is okay. associated with cancer because there are two things. The body wants to curb the growth. So it's a protective mechanism. Anemia. And when elderly males, there are no reason why males should have anemia. So anemia in a male should be taken with a little pinch of salt. Females have so many reasons why they can have it, but males don't. So anemia in a male has to be taken with a little pinch ഒരുപാട് <laughs> it may in males it may be an indicator of some serious problem okay then appo idu bone marrow test okke aano idine oru oru suggestion adhyam blood test cheyda madhi oru the complete blood count okay appo nammada oru family relative he conducted a blood test appo avade wbc korava irunnu adu correct aayittu varunnundu kooduvala irunnu correct aayittu koranju varunnundu ഹീമോഗ്ലോബിൻ ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് കുറവായിരുന്നത് കൂടി ലെവലിലേക്ക് വരുന്നുണ്ട് പക്ഷെ പ്ലേറ്റ്ലെറ്റ് കൗണ്ട് ഓൾമോസ്റ്റ് സ്റ്റാൻഡ് അപ്പൊ അത് അങ്ങനെ കുറയുന്നില്ല ഏറ്റവും പ്രധാന കാരണം മെഡിക്കേഷൻസ് ആണ് കൂടുതലാണ് but uh, thrombocytopenia and the most common reason medications are very bad medications are very bad yes ma'am you have to take a lot of medicines you have to take a lot of sugar cholesterol that may be a reason thank you ma'am I I want to meet back again. Because you do something you should know whether it was effective or not. And I want not only positive, mainly negative patients. So that I can improve next time. Ma'am, shall I ask you one more? Yeah. Can, shall one go? Problem. This one. Allopathy along with Ayurveda. The suggestion is that you can go to the two. It depends. It really depends. It depends. Exclusive answer is that you can go to the two. മോഡേൺ മെഡിസിനോട് ചോദിച്ചാൽ ആയുർവേദം കനിയെ പാടില്ല എന്ന് പറയും അതേസമയം ഓവർ സോ മെനി ഇയേഴ്സ് ഇന്ത്യയിലെ ഇപ്പോഴും നയൻറ്റി പെർസെന്റ് ഓഫ് ദ പീപ്പിൾ ഡിപ്പെൻഡ് ഓൺ ആയുർവേദ റാദർ ദാൻ അലോപ്പതി ഒരു ടെൻ പെർസെന്റ് ആൾക്കാരെ അലോപ്പതിക്ക് പോകുന്നുള്ളൂ ബാക്കി എല്ലാവരും ഇപ്പോഴും എന്താണ് 
ഹെർബൽ മെഡിസിൻസ് കൊണ്ട് തന്നെയാണ് ജീവിക്കുന്നത് അലോപ്പതിക്കാർ വളരെയധികം എതിർക്കും ബട്ട് ഐ ഹാവ് ലിറ്റിൽ ഇൻക്ലിനേഷൻ ടു ആയുർവേദ കമ്പയർ ടു മോഡേൺ മെഡിസിൻ ബട്ട് സ്റ്റിൽ ഐ കെ നോട്ട് എക്സ്ക്ലൂസീവ്ലി സേ ബിക്കോസ് ആയുർവേദ മെഡിക്കേഷൻസും ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് നോട്ട് ആസ് ഡിപ്പെൻഡബിൾ ആസ് ഇറ്റ് വാസ് ബിഫോർ പണ്ടൊക്കെ അതിന് കുറച്ചും കൂടെ ഓത്തൻറ്റിസിറ്റി ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നു ഇപ്പൊ മോഡേൺ മെഡിസിൻ്റെ അതിപ്രസരം അതിലേക്കും കൂടെ വ്യാപിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ട് and the way things are being made or the medicines are being made also has changed pandaka oru 5 liter vellathil kelapiche adu 1/2 liter aaki so it is kind of nano technology so nano particles are even heavy metals adakku ubhayichirunu appo adu absorbable and kedanu illatha vidathil aakuna process aayirunu പിന്നെ ഒരുപാട് ഇൻഗ്രീഡിയൻസിൽ ചേർ ഇൻഗ്രീഡിയൻസ് ചേർക്കും അതിൽ അത് ഓരോന്നും മറ്റേതിൻ്റെ സൈഡ് ഇഫക്റ്റ് മാറ്റാൻ വേണ്ടിയിട്ടുള്ളതാണ് ഇപ്പോഴത്തെ ആയുർവേദ മെഡിക്കേഷൻ കയ്യിൽ കിട്ടുന്നതൊക്കെ ചേർക്കുക എന്നുള്ളതാണ് അപ്പൊ അതിനൊരു ബാലൻസ് ഇല്ല അതുകൊണ്ട് എനിക്ക് എക്സ്ക്ലൂസീവ് ആയിട്ട് അത് അഡ്വൈസ് ചെയ്യാൻ കുറച്ച് ബുദ്ധിമുട്ടുണ്ട് ഇഫ് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് ഡൺ ഇൻ ദ ട്രഡീഷണൽ കറക്റ്റ് വേ ഇറ്റ് മേ ബി ഓക്കെ അതർവൈസ് മോഡേൺ മെഡിസിൻ പോലെ ഉണ്ടാക്കിയ ആയുർവേദ മരുന്നാണെങ്കിൽ So well, I think we can close the uh, uh, discussion. Okay. So thank you, ma'am. So uh, thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, that was really a wonderful session for us also. As yeah. others, uh, for us also, it was very informative, especially when you uh, told about the food and all. It was really informative for us. So now I invite Dr. Ann George for a word of thanks. so once again good evening to all uh, as dr rose told ma'am your uh, session was really informative uh, especially for i'm sure this is definitely going to help our teachers so first of all let me start off by thanking the speaker of this evening dr dina varma special mention about ma'am is that she herself took this initiative and actually provided us with all the support So I'm sure, as I told, this program is definitely going to help our teachers in bringing awareness among the students in a much easier way. So, on behalf of Idea Smart City and the WDC team, let me extend my sincere thanks to you, ma'am, for an enlightening session. Now, let me extend my sincere thank you to the manager of Bharat Mata College, Father Dr. Abraham Oliyapurathu, to whom this program plan was approached initially. and actually without any hesitation father accepted our request and made necessary arrangements so on behalf of idea smart city and wdc team our heartiest thank you to you father now the principal you, of the wdc dr shaini palati ma'am your presence actually gave us more motivation in doing this program and thank you so much ma'am for the support extended and encouraging your teachers to participate in this evening mm-hmm. Once again, thank you, ma'am, from my dear Smart City team. Thank you, ma'am. Next, let me give my sincere gratitude to Dr. John T. Abraham, who was the staff secretary of BMC. Thank you so much, sir, for all the support extended to bring out this event in a successful manner, specifically in arranging this Google Meet platform for us. Thank you, sir, once again. And on behalf of IDS Smart City and the WDC team, I extend my thank you to all the teachers of BMC for participating in this program. Definitely, it was an encouragement for us. Thank you, thank you, all the teachers from the bottom of my heart. My sincere thank you to Dr. Sanjeev Rajendran, our president, as well as the Honorable Secretary of IDS Smart City, Dr. Roji Puriyapuls. Without whom and without their support, definitely this program wouldn't have happened. Thank you, sirs, for. you know encouraging us for giving us this platform for believing in us as the wdc team and also for helping us in organizing such a program on behalf of idea smart city and wdc team 
I, we thank you, sir. Also, the w, WDC representatives, Dr. Krishna Vijayan, Dr. Rosemary, Dr. Shinu Siraj, for standing alongside as a pillar of support and taking today's event into in a very planned manner. A special thank you, which I cannot forget, to all the members of IDS Smart City branch and also the WDC members. Once again, thank you all. So a feedback okay. form will be sent along, uh, will be mailed to you or will be WhatsApp to you. So I request all the teachers to kindly fill in the feedback form. Definitely it is going to help us improve us more what we can do uh, to, you know, to bring changes, uh, how, how we can improve ourselves. So we, uh, we actually would like to know also. So that feedback form will be given to you. Please consider it and fill and revert back to us. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Anne. Thank you, Bina, ma'am. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Thank you everyone.